Dear brothers and sisters, first, Jazakumullahu khayran, and may Allah reward you for attendance today to attend this lecture to talk about the practicing Muslim or practicing Islam in the West. This is the topic Sister Mahfouza told me that you are coming to listen to it this day, inshallah. So, before we start talking about the practicing Muslim in the West, I think there is no need for that mic all the time, you see? You can hear me without mic, huh? It's better, I prefer that. Before we talk about the practicing Muslim in the West, we should explain certain expressions, certain terms. The first, practicing Islam. What's the meaning of practicing Islam? And what is the West? And what is the East? When we talk about practicing Islam, practicing Islam, this is the meaning that includes the three things, or the three degrees in the religion. In the religion, we have three degrees. First, Islam. Second, Iman. Third, huh? who knows? Who remembers? Yes, MashaAllah. What's your name, brother? Yeah, yeah. MashaAllah, brother Yahya. You're doing very well. So the third thing is Ihsan. When you come to talk about Islam, Islam judges the external things or the outer things, the act of worship. If you think, apparently, in front of me, I can't judge. You are Muslim. What are the things? They are the five pillars of Islam. When you say Shahada, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, you are Muslim. When you practice or observe Salah, the Qamatu Salah, Ita is Zakah, giving the church or giving the Zakah. The third thing, or the, the other thing, that Psalm Ramadan, Hajj al Bayt, or the, all of these things, if you admit, if you accept, you are Muslim. But in front of me. But what's, what about inside heart? There is the rule of Iman, the faith. When the people, or those, um, those people of the desert, when they came to convert to Islam, they say, Amanna. Qalat al A'rabu Amanna. The Bedouin people, or the people of the desert, say, We have believed. Allah said to them, وَلَكِنْ قُلُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Do not say we had believed. وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Iman or faith had infiltrated, had it entered your, your hearts yet. But you're just Muslims. When you say the shahada, you are not mu'min, but you are just Muslim. So this is the difference between both. Then came the other degree, which is the peak of religion. This is Al-Ihsan, as mentioned by Brother Yahya here. Al-Ihsan, who can define Al-Ihsan? Hmm. It's the highest level of... Uh, That's what I mentioned. I need something from yours. Sorry? That's what I mentioned. I need another definition. <laughs> I said the peak of religion is the highest. MashaAllah explains it. Huh? The meaning of Ihsan? MashaAllah, that's great. Jazakillah khayyam. So the meaning of Ihsan, you did very well. This, what you thought, what you said is true. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jazakillah khayyam. Jazakillah khayyam. So now, the meaning of Ihsan is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you see him. If you don't see him, he sees you subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the practicing Muslim is the one who managed to include in his faith these three things. To be Muslim, Mu'min, Muhsin. 
when we try to explain or translate the word ihsan like benevolence but i prefer to translate like perfection if you are if you are perfect muslim you will be the one who worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you see him and if you don't see him you should make sure that he sees you so who is the practicing muslim else in another meaning we can say that the practicing muslim is the one who worships allah worships only one god okay you mean that there are some muslims who worship other gods yes the prophet told us about different kinds of worship he said وسلم, let him purge the servant of dinar the servant that means the servant of dinar and dirham, the servant of money. Ta'isa Abdul Khamisa, the servant of uh, clothing or garments that he wears. Ta'isa wa takas, let him perish and relapse. From this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ shows us that a person can worship other things other than Allah. It will be clearer when you understand the meaning of worship itself. What's the meaning of worship? The meaning of worship is as defined by Ibn Taymiyyah, you can define it. Submission. submission to God is the meaning. It's better to say this is the meaning of Islam. Submission and surrendering to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we try to define the meaning of worship, Ibn Taymiyyah gives a very, very good uh, definition for it. It's an inclusive word to everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, whether external or internal deeds. I think there is no way to offer good deeds and say that this is not an act of worship. So the, the worship is not confined. Some people may, may misunderstand this meaning and think they worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just to pray, just to fast, just to uh, perform pilgrimage or zakah. These are the acts of worship or the rights of our religion. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Dhariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ It doesn't mean that just to, worship, just to pray five times a day. Not just to fast a month amongst the, the, the year. Not just to go once in your, in your life to perform pilgrimage. Because these are not the whole ibadah. These are not the whole meaning of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the meaning of worship is to be a servant to Allah all the time. A servant to Allah all the time. From the day you have attained your maturity to the day you will die. This is the meaning of worship should cover your life all that period of time. I think now we can understand why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam managed to change the whole life of the Sahaba to be an act of worship. Even when he eats, because they manage to change their habits to be acts of worship. The habits in their life, when he eats, if he had a sincere intention, if he had a sincere intention, it would be an act of worship. Our brother, when he smiles, if he had a sincere intention, it would be an act of worship. Something good will be rewarded for him. If he knows that tabassumuka fi waji akhika sadaqa, when you smile in the face of your brother, this is an act of sadaqa, it depends on the intention. When the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ These are judged by intentions. So if your smile was out of the doing the sadaqa, or just to, sh to, 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 to show me a smiling face that I love to see all the time, okay, but not laughing face. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this an act of worship, Allah will be rewarded for it, even to do that, uh, if, if, if it were just a smile on your face. So, the Sahaba managed to turn or to change the, the, the uh, daily acts or daily actions, daily deeds to be acts accepted, to be acts accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Sahabi, one of the Sahaba came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, or the Prophet once said, وَفِي بُضَعَ أَحَدِكُمْ صَدَقَةً When a man comes to have a relation with his wife, this is, he will be rewarded for that. The Sahaba said, a Prophet of Allah, a man comes to fulfill his desire, and then you say he will be rewarded? He said, yes. أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ وَضَعَهَا فِي حَرَامٍ 
So both he did it in a, an unlawful or haram way, will be punished? He said yes. He said the same. If he did it in a lawful way, he will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ibadah is not confined to the act of worship. This is the first point we should we want to understand, to know who is the practicing Muslim. Shouldn't be confined to the, the salah or the suyam or those acts of worship, but the ibadah should be all your life. When the Prophet taught us the manners, the manners with which we can live with others, it means that you should show Islam to others. If they do not convert to it, if they do not accept it, at least they will respect it. And this is our duty in, this, in, in such communities here, brothers and sisters, wallahi. If they do not convert to your religion, if he respects religion in your shape, in your character, he will respect Islam. So now what we mentioned is the practicing Muslim is the one who includes the three degrees of Islam. Islam, or the religion. Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. The other point, we mentioned that the ibadah is not confined to the meaning of, uh, of rites or acts of worship. And we mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ, that he told us that there are many types of worship, false worships, that we should avoid, and you really may uh, have one of them, and you don't know, you don't understand. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, Abdul Dirham, Abdul Dinar, the servant, the servant of Dirham or Dinar, the servant of money. He, is, he has been enslaved to money. Is this person existing in our society today? Servant of money? No. Nobody worships dollar, huh? Alhamdulillah, everybody wants the Dar al-Akhirah, and that's it. Listen, to give you the proof that this type of worship is widely spread in our society these days. When he comes to set the alarm clock for the time of work, not for the time of Fajr, huh? worships Allah or worships his work? Worships God or worships money? When he feels happy, when the money increases and bad, when the money decreases, he worships Allah and he knows, that, does this person know that the provision is coming only from Allah? When he uh, has the ultimate goal in his life to collect and accumulate money, he doesn't care from halal or haram, but the main point is that to be a millionaire in no time. You see? Those people do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do not care about the existence of God. But just their main goal, that's materialism. That's to, to be the richest person ever. So this is a type of worshipping uh, worshiping money. We can see in our community. The other type of worship, Abdul Khamisa, the one who loves to be well dressed. The one who loves to appear in the best shape. And especially some sisters when they follow the fashion, and some brothers also, mashallah, when they are follow, follow the fashion and the, 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 the uh, and try to monitor the, the pop culture. Every time this uh, superstar wore such and such, I'll do the, the same like him. The way he, of haircut, I'll do the same like him. The the way he, subhanallah, where is your Muslim identity? Subhanallah, you have you you have to have your own identity of Islam. So. When you see that's happening in a Muslim country of ours, subhanAllah, in Egypt, he, he was a professor. He doesn't pray dhuk, no asr. You know why? In order not to have his suit wrinkled. MashaAllah. <laughs> he, he, he loves to be handsome and smart all the time. So he prefers, this is Abdul Khamisa. Abdul Khamisa, the Prophet, the one who prefers to, be, to appear uh, or to, 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 to look good give this the priority then towards the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The adhan is called, but no, alhamdulillah. I pray, I pray when I wear the regular clothing at home, alhamdulillah. That's what I do. The, the, uh, the, the clothes I wear when I go to bed. Subhanallah, when he comes to pray, he wears the worst. And when he comes to stand in front of, uh, when he comes to pray and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wears the, the worst clothes of his. And when he comes to meet a prestigious person or something like that, he wears the best. 
So this is the Abdul Khamisa mentioned in the Hadith. The other type of worship that we, we, we uh, that may nullify our iltizam or being a practicing Muslim, when a man comes to worship his family, worship his wife, worship his children, whatever they need he will do, even if it's the haram. His wife asked him to do such and such, he will bring her money anywhere without caring halal or haram, the same. We say for this person that he is a worshiper for his wife, his children, not a worshiper to Allah. If he were a worshiper to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will never approach in a way of haram. So when we come again to remind with the meaning of worship, he is an inclusive word that includes everything that Allah loves among the external and internal deeds. This is the meaning of worship. And to understand the pillars of worship or the conditions of worship, the conditions to be a practicing Muslim, you have to have two conditions. To have any good deed accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to have two conditions. You know, Brother Yahya, this time? What are the conditions to have your good deeds accepted? Uh, one has to please Allah. What? One has to please Allah. And two, it has to be in accordance uh, of the Sunnah. Uh, MashaAllah. You did well, but MashaAllah. Exactly. What's your name, brother? My name is Abu Sunni. A Abu Sunni? Abu Sunni Mikhail Abdul Hakim. MashaAllah. Barakallah, fiqh, brother Abu Sunni. Uh, well, so, inshaAllah, this is the meaning what he mentioned. To have any act of worship accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to have two conditions. The first thing, as he mentioned, that's sincerity to Allah. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your deeds. Why? Why are you are attending this session here now? Why are you are attending with me this circle of knowledge today? Why? Just because my brother invited me. Just because I have a meeting. So instead of meeting him outside, I'll meet him in the, in the classroom here. Just because, 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 who came for the sake of Allah? That's, I want to revive my heart. I want to revive faith in my heart today. He is the one who will be rewarded because he came for the sake of Allah. Wallahi, the blessing of Allah and the mercies will be showered upon him as long as he is sincere. Allah doesn't accept amongst from the good deeds except that what was sincere, sincerely offered to him subhanahu wa ta'ala as he ordered us in the Quran. He said, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ They had been ordered to worship Allah just sincere in religion. مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ قُلْ إِنَّمَا أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينِ I have been ordered to worship Allah sincere in religion. And also the Buddha صلى الله عليه وسلم said إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Verily acts are judged, will be judged or will be rewarded according to the intentions. So this is the intention to be sincere to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينِ The second condition is المتابعه. You may be sincere in an act of worship, but do not follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At this case, the act will be rejected upon you, will be will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith narrated by Sayyidi Aisha radiallahu anha, مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدْ Whosoever makes a deed which is not of our religion, it's rad, rejected. Whosoever do or whosoever does an act which is not of our religion, it will be rejected. مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فَهُوَ رَدْ Rejected. Why? Because it hasn't been done by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It hasn't been done by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are the main conditions. Al-ikhlas, to be sincere to Allah. Al-mutaba'a, to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. How to innovate the, 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 the acts that done away from the sunnah, we call it innovation in religion. And Imam al-Shatibi, when he came to, to, to define the al-bid'a or the innovation in religion, he said, البدعة هي طريقة في الدين مصطنع مصطنعة تشبه تلك المشروع يقصد بها التقرب إلى الله تبارك وتعالى. Food is coming إن شاء الله. Don't don't rush for it because our brothers start to prepare their themselves for food. So please don't look back. Okay. هي طريقة في الدين fabricated way in religion. The aim of it or the target 
the target behind it is to be closer to Allah. I do something good. But, يُخْصَدْ بِهَا تَقَرُّبْ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى تُشْبُهُ تُرْكَ الْمَشْرُوعَةِ So it's not of religion. It hasn't been done by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But just he did that to be closer to Allah. From where? From my home. I just invented it. Subhanallah. Rejected. Those people, if you see some person, he says, Alhamdulillah. How many rak'ahs we pray in Zuh? Four. Okay, Alhamdulillah, I pray eight. <laughs> Can you deny that? Something good. Huh? But rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because you have invented the religion. The religion should be taken the same. If you add something, you are accusing the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he betrayed the, the, the message. You mean that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't tell us about this? Those people who make circles and start to mention Allah dancing all the time and this way and that way. Subhanallah. Who told you to do that? Nothing. But that's just only our desires. Our whims. We think that it makes us uh, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the fact? It makes you away from him. Al-Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal once said, لَيْسَ لِمْسَاحَبِ الْبِدْعَةِ تَوْبُ The one of innovation, he has no repentance. They said, Ya Imam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفُرُ الزَّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah forgives all the sins. How can you say like that? قَالَ فَصَاحِبُ الْبِدْعَةِ لَا يَعْتَقِدُ أَنَّهُ عَلَى ذَمْ The one who makes a sin, he doesn't think that he makes a sin. You see? The one who makes a bid'ah, he doesn't think that he makes, I make something good. Something makes me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I repent? So he will never repent. This is the meaning of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. You understand what I'm saying? So now, the way to achieve acceptable ibadah, the way to be a practicing Muslim, is to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing is, huh? Is to eat first, huh? <laughs> the second thing is the intention. This is the first one that starts in faith. That to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Please, brothers and sisters, to have a sincere intention. Second thing, huh? to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. Mashallah, that's it. To follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these are the conditions of. Ibad, the conditions of being a practicing Muslim. The other point, the pillars of it. When we talk about the pillars of Ibadah, what is the pillar first? The pillar is the thing. Without it, there is no act of worship. Thank you. The pillar we have in Ibadah or to have our deeds or to have our ibadah accepted, we have to fulfill these two, two pillars. Al ibadah to yashtara to laha and takuna and tartekiza ala shayayin asasiyayin wa huma hubbun tam ma'adhul in tam. Hub tam ma'adhul in tam. Pure love to Allah with pure submission to Him. You see? Pure love to Allah with pure submission. Love without submission, it's not worship. Submission without love, it's not worship. You see? Come to see. The one who loved, but he didn't submit. Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet he loved him so much, but he didn't submit to his message. So he, didn't, he hadn't been considered like a Muslim. Isn't it? The other example, the hypocrites. They submitted to Islam and the rules of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But did they love him? No. So they are not Muslim. Both of them were not Muslims. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you said there were two conditions: um, sincerity to Allah. Yeah. And sincerity and following the Prophet and, and, and the second is to the Prophet Muhammad to Allah himself, right? Um, some scholars say that um, there's a third condition, and that's that. Um, the way of the, uh, the first few generations of Muslims um, to propose uh, of the high deeds that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that um, uh, that my generation is the best of generation, those after that, then those after that. After that, then there's going to be distortion. So some some scholars, and, and, I, and many scholars say, that really there's three conditions. What are the third? What's the third? The third is that we should uh, not only see what Allah say and what 
how the prophet act upon it. But the third one, the third one is, is to uh, uh, um, how, how, how did they uh, uh, play in the role? How, how did they act upon it? Uh, what did they do? The, the meaning is the, what we mentioned amongst the conditions uh, given by the scholars, these, what I mentioned, the two are the main conditions. Other things may be uh, mentioned in sub details. You see, may, when you, when you uh, try to concentrate or understand the meaning of any condition mentioned other than what I mentioned, you'll, you'll find it involved in one of them. You okay. see, okay. you'll find it by the end of the way, you'll find it involved in them, inshallah. Okay. So, as we mentioned, we have two conditions that's in 30 and following the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, th uh, the pillars of uh, being or the pillars of Abada generally, that's who huh? remembers? The first thing, pure love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing, pure submission to Him pure. subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do you mention that? Without love, without submission, it's not worship. Submission without love, it's not worship. The same. So we mentioned the two examples of Abu Talib. Huh? Abu Talib loved or submitted, but he lacked submission. So he, he, he hadn't been a Muslim. The other one, the hypocrites. Huh? Submitted or loved? Submitted, without love. So they were, they, they, they were not considered Muslim at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To understand the meaning of servitude, or being a practicing Muslim, or being a true worshiper to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you can take this exam example to understand. A man who bought a slave to serve him all the time. What suppose that servant do with him? To obey him all the time. Can he hesitate? Can he reject the orders? Can he say no? Can he even argue with him, sir, I see such and such, your orders are not in the... Can he do that? No. But he just knows to say yes. Okay? Sir, I'm at your pick and call all the time. That's the servant, what, what he should uh, say. Why? Because his master bought him with his own money. His master bought him with his own money. So what about the one who created? The one who created you. Who deserves to be obeyed? The master or the master of masters, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of all creatures. The one who created you from nothing. Subhanallah. He is the first one. Should be given the priority. Then my friends, then my parents, then every, then anybody else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if you believe that everything you had been given to you by Allah, so do not use it in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you know that this abdomen, your belly, given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you shouldn't put anything inside it except what's halal. What's accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you know that those ears are given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should never hear to something other than Allah. You should never hear to something that Allah has prohibited to you. If you know that those eyes given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are not your own, not of your own, you should never look to something prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning of slavery or servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever he orders you to do, you should do. Whatever he orders you to do, you should do. Because Allah will never ask you to do something which you cannot afford to do that. Anything Allah has made it halal for you or ordered you to do that, you should know that's in your capability. You have to do it. And anything prohibited, whether we know the wisdom or not. Like that woman, when he met a Muslim woman, she said to him, why Islam prohibiting alcohol to you? Why they are prohibiting pork and such things? She said to her, have you ever had uh, a car accident? She said, yes. She said, why? She said, I was drunk at that time. Subhanallah, this alcohol, which you argue for, you say, well, Allah has prohibited. The American law prohibits the alcohol as well, but when you are driving. Otherwise, you can do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the precaution before doing these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited, whether you know the wisdom or not. You see? 
So when you say or the, 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 another professor, he was in Britain. Uh, a person said to him, "Why Islam prohibits to 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 shake hands with women?" He said, "You have what? Darab Allah, for example, رجلا فيه شركاء متشاكسون ورجلا سلما لرجل." Allah gives us the example of a person of a slave who is owned by many people. Can you imagine this? Me and you and ten of our brothers. I need to buy a, a slave, and I have only a thousand dollars, and the slave costs say ten thousand dollars. So I asked brother Yafiz and brother I'm brother Ibrahim and such. We can ten brothers to participate getting or buying a slave. We participated in it. Everyone paid one thousand dollars. So. We shared the sleep when we came back home. I said to him, get me some coffee. The other one, I need to wash my clothes. The other one, go there, go here. That, Subhanallah, what can the slave do? How can the slave obey the 10 masters at the same time? It's impossible. When Allah says, وَرَجُلًا سَلَمًا لَرَجُلًا And the slave only, owned by one master. He says to him, do that. And then he will have a rest. Do this, and will he, then he will come back to have a rest. Subhanallah. He is in rest. He is co in a comfortable position all the time. While the other one who give his heart to many things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no doubt that he will suffer a lot. Brothers and sisters, when we talk about practicing Islam in the West, and this is the main topic after we give the introduction, how to be a practicing Muslim, and what the meaning of uh, practicing Islam, especially in this community or in any other community, this is the meaning what we mentioned. The other point, when we, uh, when the sister asked about the difference between Islam in the West or Islam and Islam in the East, in the East, Islam is the same Islam, here or there, never changes. The rulings of Islam are the same all the time. What changes what we call al-fatwa? What the meaning or what the difference between al-huk and al-fatwa? Al-huk like when you say uh, to 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 uh, leave your beard, it's mandatory or it's wajib. This huk, this ruling in Islam, it never changes. But in some conditions, we can say for this person. Do not do that. Or you are allowed to shave. Why? Because you have certain circumstances. You have certain conditions. So you can shave at that time. So this is fatwa. Given to a certain person for a certain reason, for in a certain place. So this is the difference between hukm and fatwa. But Islam is the same. It never it changes. Okay? When we talk about the Muslim in the West and the East, we can talk about those challenges that meet the Muslim in the West which are not existed or which are not found with him in the, in the East. For example, in the Muslim country, those fitan, those uh, the, 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 uh, the state of materialism, or how people did their best or spend most of their time for materialism or to gain money. That's the, the philosophy upon which the parents have brought their children upon. They brought them that's to gain or to earn money as much as they can. And the importance of yours or your position in this world will depend upon how much you have. SubhanAllah, this, the, 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 these points are the different, uh, concern the differences between the West and the East. These are the challenges. But for Islam itself, it never changes. And here we'll mention some general rules. We should know and take in consideration all the time when we talk about that point. The first thing that we should know, that Islam is very easy to be practicing by Muslim anywhere and anytime because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he established the values and the teachings of Islam, he made them human, human teachings that goes that go without humanity or the human nature by its nature. Allah said, Sutrat Allah ladi Everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed Islam, it matches the human, uh, the human nature. So it's easy to be practiced, to be practiced 
practiced or to be done by uh, or any anywhere and any time. The other point, we should know that the difference in aqidah it doesn't entail or it doesn't require enmity, because some people misunderstand. This is a Muslim and this is Christian, so he is my enemy. But Subhanallah, what's the reason for that? The reason is the lack of knowledge to many of our brothers. If they understand their religion, if they read the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will see how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to deal with non-Muslims. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to visit visit his uh, his neighbor who was a Jewish, who was a Jew. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to show the manners of Islam to others, to know that this is the religion of Islam. This is the message of peace Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has sent to humanity. So the, the, the difference in the, in the Aqidah or the creed, it shouldn't entail, it shouldn't, it doesn't require enmity. But the enmity comes in case of fighting, if they uh, transgress the limits against us, you have to defend yourself. You shouldn't take a, neg a, a negative position or to, uh, to keep away from defending yourself. But if in a peaceful society, the Muslim, you'll find the Muslim practicing his manners as being ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. The Prophet said, اتَّقِ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتْ Have taqwa to Allah, have got consciousness to Allah, wherever you are, wherever. In a Muslim community, non-Muslim community, wherever you are, you should have taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What by Sayyidah al-Hasan al and the, the main point in the hadith, وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ And deal with people with a good manner. People, not just with Muslims. When the Prophet ﷺ said, and deal with people, all people, Muslims and non-Muslims. You should show them your manners. <clears throat> and the evening, in case of war, in case of fighting, in case of conflict, Islam ordered us to keep on our own manners. Our own manners. Even if they transgressed the limits, even if they violated our rights, you have to keep on your own manner. Rasulullah said when he used to send an army to fight anywhere, he used to recommend them first, do not touch, do not uh, cause harm to a woman, to an old person. Just the one who fights, that's the one who should be <coughs> fought. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the most important characteristics and features of Islamic Sharia that flexibility. The Islamic Sharia is dynamic and flexible to be performed, to be applied everywhere. And as the Prophet told that this religion is the religion of ease. Our religion is easy to be practiced. In case If you are traveling, you can pray anywhere, anyhow. If you are traveling, you can combine the salat. You can show the salat. That's to make it easy for you. If you are sick, you can pray in the position you can. Allah never asks you to do something which you cannot do. The other point, <clears throat> even in case of starvation, of, you, uh, of hunger, and you find something to eat. In the uh, war of Serbia, Uh, the Muslims, they were in siege, and at that time they ate from the eight dogs, and something prohibited to them, and al they did animals at that time. So subhanAllah, and at the same time, it was, it was only allowed to them in this position, because this is the time of necessity. But at the same time, other Muslims cannot do that, because it's prohibited for them. Why was it allowed to those Muslims to eat from something prohibited because this is the easiness of, uh, of Islam which allowed them to do that such in this position that shows us the flexibility of our religion. Some brothers may say we do not eat except for the biha. Subhanallah, the biha is something slaughtered by Muslim. Okay, but Allah has allowed you to eat from something slaughtered by the people of the book like the Jews or Christians. You see? So this, uh, to, to show us how our Islam is flexible and, ab and uh, uh, eligible, it makes us able to live and coexist in any community by the Lord of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the fifth point I mentioned here concerning practicing Islam in the West, this Islam ordered us to make use of the progress of the non-Muslim communities 
and support them in these points, in these things. If we can help to, uh, to achieve progress in such uh, communities or to achieve something which will be beneficial to humanity, we should support and do that. The Prophet ﷺ, he praised a treaty which he called Hilful Fudul. This treaty used to support the needy, feed them, and get the rights for the people who are oppressed. And the Prophet ﷺ praised that. Though the people who arranged for that, they were non-Muslims at that time. But the Prophet ﷺ approved them and said, if I were to be invited to them, I would accept their invitation. We accept the truth, even if it comes to us from the Satan. And we reject, we reject the falsehood, even if it comes to us from the most righteous person. How is it? We accept the truth from the, the Satan? Yes, it has been done when Abu Huraira was keeping the, the, the full staff of Zakat al Fitr, and then came the Satan shaped in, uh, in, in the shape of a man. And he complained to him. And by the end of the story, he said to him, I'll teach you something which Allah made beneficial to you. Before you go to bed, you should decide Ayatul Kursi, Allah la ilaha illa huwa hayul qayyum. There is no, no Satan can approach you at that time. When he mentioned that to the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Huraira, the Prophet ﷺ said to him, huh? He told you the truth while he is a liar. He is a Satan. The Shaytan came to you, Abu Huraira. So we accept the truth from anywhere. Whenever you see somebody doing something good, you support him as long as it's beneficial to humanity. Yes. He told he, um, he told Shaitan um, told him to say something before yeah, he got to hell. What was it that he told him? Ayatul Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa Allah. Ayatul Kursi, we're going to him before going to bed. In the same time, so what can you? How can you apply this meaning in our time? For these oaths or these uh, covenants or these uh, things applied by some nations or these laws which are beneficial to humanity, we should support and say yes. Because some brothers say, they say no, we'll not vote for that because they are non-Muslim. How come, subhanAllah, how can you live in a community and keep yourself away from that? You see? The other point that, if, uh, although it has ordered you to, uh, to participate with them, to mix with them, but not to melt with their culture. You should keep on your own identity of Islam. These are the, some points I prepared to fulfill or to cover the points uh, asked or required from to me by uh, Sister Mahfouza. And I wish uh, that you understand what I say, Alhamdulillah. If you have any question now, it's up to you. I mentioned that a Muslim should, should have his own identity. What comes or what uh, agrees with your religion, you should support. What's good for humanity, you should support. Otherwise, you should reject. When you mention something or some uh, some examples for uh, like what, what you mentioned, is it uh, accepted by Islam or not? So you should support or not? This is the point. You shouldn't support. No, 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 no. The, 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 the religion judges in this. Not if it, Subhanallah, this is the main point. This another point we wish to mention that the West, when they judge, when they look at religion, they look at it like the, the spiritual side only, and that's it. While we consider the religion in our life everything, not just the civil life and the spiritual life as well. We shouldn't separate between both. See? Other question? Brother Yahya, I expected you first. Okay. Uh, you give the example of uh, Abu Huraira, right? Yes. Uh, even though Shaitan told him to recite Idol Kursu before he goes to bed, 
but he had Muhammad peace be upon him at that time, and he confined with Muhammad peace be upon him, and then he, Muhammad, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told him that yes, what he told you is right. Yes. But in today's world, we have uh, several issues, and we think, sometimes we think that it is right, but we don't know uh, who to guide us, uh, whether we go to the Imam, Shaykh, وما اختلفتم فيه من شيء فحكمه إلى الله فلا وربك لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم. This is the meaning of the verse that if the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم died, we have his sunnah that judges between us these days whether this thing is acceptable or not. And we have the Quran that tells us, gives us this the criterion. This is the furqan, the criterion between the the good and the bad, with which you can see, you can you can decide whether this thing. Is uh, accepted by our religion or not? Even if there is, uh, even if the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not amongst us these days. Okay. Okay. The, we responded to the, the, the question what the sister was saying about the the, the gay, lesbian thing, and should we um, get involved in that issue? Um, and you said that we have two things. That we have two. We have two. Well, the Prophet Muhammad saw something that we have two things, and if we follow them, we would never go yes, astray, that's which it. is the Quran Allah and, 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 and the Sunnah yes. the proper, of the Prophet Muhammad. Say so, um, in the book, which I, not to brag or anything like that, but I've read the book 22 times, and I'm, on a, I'm on a, about to read it again. Uh, um, with cover to cover, and um, one verse that's it said, whatever the messenger gives you, accept it. Whatever you receive, reject it. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, uh, this is something that Allah forbids because He had destroyed a whole town of uh, 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 of people who were involved in a, a situation dealing. What, what, what they're doing now uh, mm -hmm. uh, with, with uh, the gays and the lesbians. So it clearly states in the Quran, in the Arabic and in, in, in the English, that we should no way be involved in any of that. Uh, this is something that we should stay away from, make dua that we stay away from it, and, 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 and not let it enter our heart because our heart uh, uh, as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that there's a piece of flesh in our body that if it's, it's good, good we're body. good. Our character is good. Our morals are good. But if it's bad, the we're bad. bad. And that's the heart. So if 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 uh, 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 we follow our heart and we follow what you know the Quran and the Sunnah said, we stay stay away from that. Those people that are involved in that make dua for them, and the only dua the Prophet said that we can make for anybody is to, that they, they're a lot guides into Islam, and that, you know, be kind to them, and show them, and, and, and speak good to them, and help them. And, and also, and, by the way, that's good you know, to make dua, that mashallah, that's good. But if you have the position of, if you have the, the authority to change, you have to change. Yes, if you, you have the word, uh, uh, the word will be obeyed by some people or some group, you have to say this word. You have to change if you are able to do that. In the hadith, man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yugayiruhu bi yadihi fa illa min istata'a fa min lisanihi fa illa min istata'a fa bi qalbihi wa thalika abaa fil iman. Whosoever sees something wrong, he should change it with his hand. If he could it, with his tongue. If he could it, with his heart. And this is the least degree of, uh, of iman and faith. Some of our brothers misunderstand this hadith. And this is uh, the reason behind many, many problems in, the, in our society's days. Right. They say, مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْ كَرَمْ فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ بِيَدْ Whosoever something bad, he should change it with his own hand. A brother who doesn't wear jalabiya or, or uh, Islamic tamis or something, he's fast. Come and beat him. You have to wear next time such and such to be a Muslim. SubhanAllah, this is not the meaning. No. If you find a, a woman who is nude or doesn't wear uh, the, the, the Islamic uh, where she no, okay. he starts to, right. uh, to, to to insult and be and subhanallah no, it's not Islam. Mm -hmm. Come to understand the meaning of a hadith. Man ra'a minkum who sees something wrong, he should change it 
with his hand and the second degree with tongue, the third one with heart. With hand for the people of authority. Yeah. You are at home, is the, you are of authority at your home. Right. If you are in your uh, job, you, can, you have the authority there. If you are a prisoner of a country, you have the authority at that time. So these are for the, the people of authority to change by hand, not of mine, not for me. Right. To change with the tongue, this is the job of scholars, the people who give dawah. Yeah, okay. You see, everyone who uh, has knowledge and give dawah this tongue to, to give advice, that's it. Right. Not to change it with your hand, not to punish, not, it's not your rule. The third one, to change by how? Huh. This is for regular Muslims, regular people. Yeah. So, Oh, yes. sorry, I'm going to you. I just had a question. If um, isn't protest a form of changing or something that's wrong by with your tongue? At least, not accepted by heart. Because uh, some people, when he says, when he sees uh, uh, something wrong, like a nude woman or something like that, he says, Alhamdulillah, I'm just watching. <laughs> I didn't ask her to do that. You see, Subhanallah, you should reject it by heart. To prove that you are Muslim, you should reject. You see? And some others may, may, may justify for themselves. He says, Allah Jamil, Allah uh, loves everything beautiful. I'm just uh, contemplating the creature of God. <laughs> this is Wallahi, this is from the ways of Satan that deceives man. You see? So at least you should deny it by your heart. When I was uh, a teenager, in the beginning of being a practicing Muslim, I used, whenever I see a new woman, I say to make dua against her. <laughs> you see? Why? Because she, she, she makes something wrong. But like one of my brothers, may Allah accept from him and reward him for that, he said, why? Why don't you say, Allahumma hadiha wahdi man a'anaha ala thalik? Allah. He said, why don't you say, oh Allah, guide her. And guide the one who helped her to do that. This is Islam. Wallahi. This is the meaning of Islam. I thought about it. what the benefit I got when I cursed her or when I uh, so, uh, when I uh, make dua against her. Right. So may it may be a time of istijaba of accepting the dua and Allah accepts your dawa and make brings his, her heart to the way of iman. Yeah. Subhanallah. Even if they are non-believers, say Allah Mahdi. Yeah. That's you will be rewarded for the dawa you make and you will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it's, it's one question. You, you said practice Islam in the, in the West. You had five things uh, that you mentioned. Yeah. Do you remember the five that you... That you that the, which one you need? Uh, I think the first thing that's easy for every Muslim to practice the, 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 the teachings of, of his religion. The second point, the, the, that the, first the difference between... Practice? Yes. Oh, the first one to practice. Okay, go ahead. The second one, you okay. mentioned that the difference in the creed, it doesn't require to it require enmity. Okay. This is the second point. The third point, we said that even if case of enmity, Islam ordered us to keep on our manners and do not change if they change. And this also should be taken for us as Muslims between ourselves, yeah. with, one, with, Muslim, with Muslims with one another. Uh -huh. If a person come to say bad speech or bad words to you, you should keep on your manners. Do not respond to him uh, the, the, the way he, 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 he uh, insulted or the, the bad way he used with you. Right. The, this is the third point. The fourth point, we mentioned that one of the most important features or characteristics of Islamic Sharia, that it's dynamic and flexible. And the fifth point, we mentioned that Islam ordered us to make benefits of the, uh, the facilities and the tools of the West as long as they are supporting humanity or cause benefit to humanity. And the last point that we, uh, we mentioned uh, that at the Islami all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed is good for us. Uh, if, even or, we, or uh, if we know the wisdom behind that or not, we should know that something good given to us, to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the six points I mentioned. Oh, six. Any Six points, I think. Yes. Any more questions? Yes. Um, what would you do? Um, how would you approach a person? Or what would you do for a person who has like, like, grown up in this country, but they've rejected their faith, their religion, they rebelled. Basically, they rebelled against Islam, and 
you know, there's I've met like certain people like they've rebelled against some. Some of them are like, you know, they believe in it, but they don't follow anything when they're like a, a little bit rebellious or that. And some of them, some of them just have a total disbelief in it, like they don't believe in Allah. Anymore. I would like get them back on track. It's like the first step. First, you should be merciful with him and follow the general rule that reads, You were like this before, you, will be guided, you have been guided to, uh, to be a practicing Muslim. Put yourself in his position and say to yourself, What is the best thing I should hear from my friends to go back to the right way? Imagine yourself in his position. Look at the reasons that brought him to that way. They study in the school, the, the theories of Darwin, that the, 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 original, uh, the, the man was a monkey before being a man or something like that. SubhanAllah, while the sound nature belies that, try to talk to him first about the miracles of the Quran, the miracles of the Sunnah. Try to make him contemplate and understand the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you got him from this way, it's okay. Otherwise, try to follow, to, 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 to talk to him with logic. And everything around you would witness that there is no God but Allah. You got it now? When you're talking about logic, right? So follow up on the question that the sister asked earlier about the um, gay people, right? About what? About the gay people. Um, yeah, yeah. The Jewish world was verbally confronted with them. How do we logically explain that we have different views and I'm just seeing that we're just I think it needs another lecture to talk about this. <laughs> but inshallah, what, what, yani the, 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 the least thing you should say that it's something contradiction, contradicts the human nature. Isn't it? Okay? But inshallah, if we want to uh, assign a whole lecture about these uh, suspicion of these things, inshallah, because brother uh, told me that, the, uh, brother Yafis told me that. I have five, now they are three, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> three minutes. And do we have to finish now, inshallah? We may arrange for that to make a lecture talking about this topic uh, specifically, inshallah. Brother, the last question, inshallah. Yes. So how do you draw a line between what's good and what's wrong? Automatically, it applies to everybody in general, no matter where you are in the world, what's uh, like logically good and wrong? What's okay. the line between good and wrong? By following the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قال Allah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنْ تَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ فُرْقَانًا You who believe, if you have taqwa to Allah, if you have the God righteousness, the God consciousness to Allah, He will give you a criteria, a criteria with which you can differentiate between the wrong and the bad. If you try, if you, if you spend some of your time to search in the Quran, the Sunnah, and understand about your religion, the things of, that will make you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah with, will enlighten your heart with, uh, with the light of Islam, with the light of ma'rifah and the knowledge about him and by this you can differentiate between you can differentiate between the good and the bad easily insha'Allah you understand this? هذا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته